We're going to cover the first order plus dead time model. This is often called an FOP DT, or sometimes we call it first order plus time delay, so FOP TD. This has uh, two variables here. This is going to be Y of T is going to be my output, and then U of T is my input, or a thing that I can change, or the controller can change. And then I have three parameters, KP, tau p and theta p and those are going to adjust the shape of the response between the input and the output kp is going to be my gain and that is my delta y over delta u at long time periods or between steady state data points that's called a gain the tau p is called a time constant and a time constant is basically how fast it takes to get from one steady state to the other now we're going to see something about 63.2% of the way there um, in one time constant. So it's about halfway there as uh, one time constant will get you about half, a little over halfway there. And then uh, theta p is the dead time. So when you move the input, it's how long it takes the output to start responding. So let's go ahead and just sketch some of these. Um, let's say I have an input like this. Then I have a step of plus 2 equals delta u. And then I have a response that looks like this on my y of t. u of t and y of t. Um, and let's say this changes by plus 5 equals delta y. So I can know that um, my gain, kp, it's going to be equal to 5 divided by 2. One of the things I look for in uh, dead time, I might calculate dead time next. Okay, it's how long it took, takes to uh, start responding after a step input, and that would be theta p. Now how fast it takes to get there, um, I'd go to about a little over halfway there, and this area right here, that's going to be my time constant. And I'll show you the math behind that as well. Um, let's say we have a step input in U, as I showed right here, that um, this equation in Laplace variables, um, I'm going to transfer it into Laplace variables, rearrange it, and then come out with a solution. And this in uh, the solution to this, to a step input, is uh, in, in zero initial conditions is going to be 1 minus e to the minus t over tau p. Okay, and uh, I'm also going to have a theta p here with the um, dead time. Okay, tau p. And then I'm going to have kp delta u. And then um, I'll multiply all of this by a step function that has my delay here. So here is my analytic solution. Um, if I just plotted it, it would look like that right there. So one of the things I want to um, you know show is this uh, dead time, or sorry, with no dead time. Um, let's just assume no dead time first of all. Okay, and I just have 1 minus e to the minus t over tau p times kp delta u. I just want to show that one time constant is about 63% of the way to the new steady state. So if I plug in t equals tau p, then I'll have y of tau p divided by kp delta u equals 1 minus e to the minus tau p divided by tau p. Now these two are going to cancel and I'm just going to be left with 1 minus e to the negative 1. And this right here is 0 0.632. So it takes about um, one time constant, I'll get about 63% of the way to my new steady state. 
And I can see that this right here from the definition of gain, okay, if I defined my gain earlier as delta y over delta u. And so delta y equals kp times delta u. So this is going to be equal to my delta y. So I have something here that says um, my y of tau p is going to be 0 0.632 times my total change in y. There's my formula that shows um, one time constant is will get you about 63% of the way to the new steady state. If you have a dead time, all that you do is just shift this uh, to the right. So without the dead time, it would look like that. And every point, I just shift all of that response over. And when I have a function like this right here, let's say I just said it's u of t. And uh, u of t, let's say minus 3, let's say I had 3 dead time then it would shift, um, it's like I have a step input, but it just shifts it over by three. Okay, so there's u of t, and there is u of t minus three. Okay, and same thing down here. This is my uh, step function, it's just a step of one that steps from zero to one at time equals zero. But if I have this dead time here, then it just shifts, shifts up from 0 to 1 at time equals theta p. So that's it's actually a very simple function, but it just allows me to multiply it by anything. It's going to be 0 beforehand and then equal to that function afterwards. So let's go to a, a widget that I created. Um, this is a Python widget that shows as I change the gain. Okay, I'm going to change that to negative 4.5, and you're going to see the response here. So in all cases, I have a step input of 1, the green line there, and then you can see the response by how I change the gain. So I just change it to 5.5, and so you can see that the final value will trend up to 5.5. Okay, and there's 10. Now what I want to do is show, um, you know, if I, if I change the time constant tau. So if I make that longer, then it's just going to take longer to get to the new steady state. And if I make that shorter, like 0.9, then it's going to get to the new steady state very fast. Okay, again, one time constant is 63% of the way to the new steady state. Okay, much longer. And then if I increase the dead time, you can see it's just going to shift over. If I make that very small, then it responds almost immediately. Okay, so if you'd like to just get a feel for what these three constants do with the first order plus dead time, you can open up this widget uh, that I have on this um, web page. Just download this interactive widget. When you select it, it'll show you to you in this NB viewer. And when you download it, it'll try to save it as a, um, it's gonna try to save it as an HTML file. You just have to rename it as a .ipynb file, ipython notebook file. Okay, and alternatively, you can just select the code and, be, and paste that into an ipython notebook. Okay, so that concludes, um, you know, this tutorial on first order plus dead time models. I'll just mention the FOPDT models can model many dynamic systems. So it's a simplification. You can fit it, fit data, um, fit these parameters to data uh, to get a, um, an approximate match of the dynamics of a system. There's going to be two areas that we're going to focus on. One is going to be a graphical method for fitting. So you could look at a response and be able to pick out these three constants, kp, tau p, and theta p. The other one, I'll go to that one really quick. Okay, so there's a few steps to do that. There's a procedure to fit the model. And then the next one is an optimization method. So if you don't have a good step input, 
then you might need to use optimization to come up with Kp, Tau P, and Theta P.